hello my amazing YouTube family and welcome to I think the most anticipated video um, on my channel that being my eyeshadow palette collection and possible declutter yeah I'm sure that will happen probably uh, this stack which is about three feet tall is is not all of my palettes um, I can't fit all of my palettes in this area I know that that says a lot. Oh boy. And the overwhelming majority of you, when I asked this quite a few months ago, had said that you wanted to see me on camera. I don't know why, but I appreciate it. And so that is what I'm going to do. And also the overwhelming majority of you said that you wanted one video. I don't even know if I can record this in one sitting, but nonetheless, it is going to be one video. So uh, please get a snack, order some dinner. <laughs> uh, I have my copious amounts of coffee that I'm going to need, and uh, let's let's just get into it. There is not going to be any real rhyme or reason to how I go through them, but I will figure things out. Okie dokies. We're going to start right now. This is the BH Cosmetics Nouveau Neutrals. This was a really nice palette. I really do enjoy... BH Cosmetics Shadows. I didn't use this one too much. I probably only dipped into it about five times, I think because I got other palettes that just interested me more. But it's a neutral eyeshadow palette with a lot of really, really pretty shimmers. And I'm probably, no, I'm definitely going to put this one into my giveaway pile. And it is time to say goodbye to her. I know the packaging got really dirty, but it is white plastic, so. Ugh. My Moschino and Sephora palette. There is not a snowball's chance I would ever get rid of this palette. I adore this palette. This palette is amazing. It is shaped like a little Mac book, and it has a huge, gigantic mirror, which I love. And it also has this little bear here. It's also a color switch for your shadows. These are amazing, wonderful shadows. The gold and the shimmer the gold and the shimmer, the gold and the silver are just the highlights. These I have to swatch because they're just so amazing. I mean, they are just, they're blinding. They look like liquid metal. This palette had very mixed reviews. I am so glad that I picked it up and I will never get rid of this palette. I love her. I have a bunch of Morphe palettes that I think are going to be on the chopping block. This is one that I think I will keep. It is the 35H, and I just like the two different color stories that they have. The range of blues, a mix of warm and cool tones, and then your typical orangey, peachy type of look here with some deeper colors. This one performs okay. What I have noticed with several of the Morphe palettes is that they don't last very long on my eyes, but I did enjoy this one, and I do enjoy this one, so I'm going to be keeping her. This one is the 35T. As you can see, it is a rather redundant, neutral toned palette. But honestly, I got just kind of bored with it because there's so many closely related colors. If this was a nine pan palette, I think it would be great, but I don't dip into it. I've dipped into mostly some of the purpley shades, and I think someone may be able to get a little bit more enjoyment out of this than I have. This one is the 35P. I bought this one because the purple section attracted me. Again, there's a lot of redundancy, which I think you already know happens a lot in the Morphe palettes. They just put too many colors of too similar color story, and I'm not sure why. I really do enjoy these purple tones, so I'm probably going to keep this one. I may decide at a later point that I'm going to give it away, but for now I'm going to keep it. I have a lot of special edition palettes, and some of them I'm definitely going to be keeping. This is the Tale as Old as Time. This is from Lorac. It's the Beauty and the Beast palette. It's probably a good three years old, but to me the shadows are still good. It has the little book. It's just adorable. It comes with a brush, which I thought was a nice brush. You can see some dips in the shadows of the ones that I really gravitated towards. I haven't used it in quite some time, but I'm definitely going to be keeping it, and it's nostalgic, and I like it. This is the Lorac Mega Pro Palette. This one I've used quite a bit. I don't know. There's really only a couple of colors in here that I'm truly in love with, which is this indigo color, this purple, 
and it seems that every time I grab for the palette that's really the color that really interests me I'm probably going to pass this one along because I have other ones of similar color stories that I really enjoy and I don't want to keep a palette just for one single eyeshadow that I can probably duplicate this one I can already tell you I am keeping it. Believe it or not, I never went out and purchased any of the smaller ones. I was going to try to get mine, which is Sagittarius, but I never did for some reason. This one is specifically the Love Signs palette. There are two of them. I adore these palettes. These shimmers are just so pigmented and so intense, and I love that they have some coordinating matte shades. I obviously haven't used it a ton. This here is supposed to be a regular highlighter, but... I use it for my eyes all the time, and it is extremely intense and absolutely stunning. This is from Glam Light. It is the Cake Palette. The packaging, just with the little oven, I'm telling you, they, they are ingenious when it comes to their packaging. Yes, it's a bit bulky and cumbersome, but I can't help it. I love it. I mean, look at this. It's a strawberry shortcake got a beautiful bright color story thinks I'm going to be doing a look with these purples over here because I want to play with it more again I have so many palettes that I don't get to enjoy them which is why I want to curate it a little bit so that I can really pull for some more palettes the limb light shadows are really really good and there are a couple more palettes that I wanted but you know I haven't pulled the trigger on them yet but so adorable Here's another Morphe palette. This one is the 39L Hit the Lights. I'm honestly not thrilled with this. The one section that I really did enjoy was this one over here and some of the pinks. This looks just like the Laura Lee Los Angeles Colorful palette, and I just, I never reach for them. I, I don't know why. This section was nice, too. I do like this um, black with the glitter in it. It is really, really nice. It is very intense and very deep. I think I'm going to give this one a little bit more love and try it some more. And, you know, if I'm ready to say goodbye to it, I will do so. Here's a Morphe palette that is extremely dirty because I squirted half a bottle of foundation on it. Oh, well, this one is the Artistry palette. This one I actually do like. I think I've used this one the most out of my large palettes for mainly this blue section and, again, the oranges. But these greens, I've worn these on camera before. They do make a really nice look. By the way, these make really good bronzers in case you're interested. Of course, you can use them as eyeshadows, but I really do like them as bronzers as well. This one is the 35V. This one looked much more enticing on camera. As you can see, I have a lot of these colors. As a matter of fact, I have a palette, I think, with just these. This one has a bit of redundancy, I think, as far as the light shades go. I'm going to hold on to it for now, and I think I'm going to be doing like a second round of declutter and, and see what I want to do with them. Let's just go over this one. This I recently got in the Midas Cosmetics Mystery Box. This is the, I think it says Artistry Palette number one. I did put one of the palettes into a giveaway. This one has some bright colors. I did do a look with the pink and the orange and the gold. I'm going to hold on to it. I, I just don't know how much I'm really, really going to use it. This one I've, I've had for quite a while. It's the Matte Bar by Maybelline. I actually really like it. My only complaint is the size of the pans. Sometimes it's really hard to get my brush into them. But I keep this one pretty close because it just has a nice variety of neutral mattes. I think it performs well. I said the only thing I don't like is the size because sometimes I'll accidentally mix the colors. But for an all matte palette, you know, when you just need that extra color for your brow bone or whatever. I think it's great. Oh, my Violet Voss palettes. I love my Violet Voss palettes. I'm so glad that I've never paid full price for Violet Voss thanks to BoxyCharm and Ipsy and not only getting them in the box but the sales that they have. This one does not have a name on it. I did get this one in a box and it's really, really pretty. This is an extremely vibrant orange and it is not showing up on camera at all the way it is in the pan. These are a little bit of a drier formula. There is some inconsistency across Violet Voss and her shadows, but it's really pretty. I did a really nice eye look with it. I don't even know if she's a girl, but nonetheless, look, I mean, look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. I have a bunch of the mini lime crime palettes, all of which I got at TJ Maxx. This one is the Venus XS. The packaging is gorgeous, albeit a bit bulky, so that may bother some people. It's very pretty, just got the four colors. 
these are nice but they can act as toppers they're not going to be that bam in your face they're very very light but see how that one has that beautiful duochrome shift to it i think i am going to let this one go because i just i don't reach for it that often so oh this one was called holly days by the way and this one is called vixen to me this is a little bit more wearable for me again this one is going to be that same type of topper which means I have to work with it just a little bit more than usual. But I do really like the color story. That's a gorgeous shimmer. That one happens to be pigmented. I would probably play with this one a lot more often than I would that other one. So this one is called Sunkissed in the yellow. This one's really pretty. It's very, very summery. It's got that orange and that yellow. I'm going to keep this one for a little while longer. I think if I try it and I don't really like the results I'm getting, I'm going to pass that one along. Here's another one. This one is in also the cardboard packaging, but it's a little bit smaller. This one is called Fresh Squeezed. It's got a purple and the yellow and the orange. I do think I'm going to pass this one on. I think I have that yellow in another one. This is all mattes, and I think it's great, but maybe someone else can enjoy it. I think my last of the little baby palettes. This one is called Frosted. This one's really, really pretty for a very quick and easy blue look. The really gorgeous blue. Again, I have to build them up just a little bit, but I definitely like it for sure. Here I have from Makeup Geek. When they were getting rid of their old formula, I bought a bunch of things. This is the Vegas collection. I don't really think I've played with this one very, very much. It is in the cardboard packaging. It's called Vegas Lights. It has two mattes and four shimmers. It's very, very pretty, very simple, very classic. So, you know, I have to give this one a try. And I like Makeup Geek Shadows. I haven't tried her new formula because I think they're exorbitant. Should I say remind myself how much I like it? And as you can see, yes, I do keep packaging a lot. I know. Oh, my favorite palettes, which I'm not getting rid of. The other one I just wore the other day, which was the little something. It was a new palette. This is the Christmas set that I bought. The Tartlet in Bloom. The Tartlet to Little Toasted. And what the heck was the other one called? I don't remember. I love these palettes. This one is neutral and everyday. It has a little bit of glamour to it with the shimmers. I love the formula. I love the size. I do not own the large ones, but I am so happy. This was my favorite Christmas purchase that I made, and I really enjoy this one. This one has a little bit more of a, a deeper, more dramatic look to it. Gorgeous. Love it. Keeping it. Here's a MAC palette that I did pick up in TJ Maxx for $20. I don't think I've used it very much. It's called the Classic Cutie. Oh, yes. Okay, now I remember. These are absolutely gorgeous. I have to remind myself to use this one. This particular shade, oh, my. I love it so, so much. It is such a gorgeous bronzy shimmer, and I'm keeping it. And you can even use some of the shades for highlighters, too. This is from Butter London. I received this in a box. It's really cute. It's got that little wood tone appearance to it. I haven't tried it that much. You can see I've used it just a little bit. I'm going to have to give this one another go. Oh, it's called the Natural Goddess. It's on the inside. These mattes are a little bit dry. Maybe I had trouble with them, but that really swatched well. I think it's pretty. This is the Jouer Tan Lines palette. I think I bought this at one of the sales. Don't quote me on it. I love the packaging. It's so summery. Reminds me of a tropical islands. Look at that duochrome shadow. When I look at it, it's purple and has the classic shift to blue when you hold it up. It's definitely very light. Um, it is more of a topper. Now that, you know, the warmer weather is coming around, I would love to play with this yellow. Ooh, that yellow is intense and it's a shimmer. Here is a little baby palette from Ulta Beauty. I've always said that I really do enjoy Ulta Beauty shadows, but this is one that I got in a little gift thing, so the packaging is very cheap, but they don't change their formula. They're really, really tiny pans. They're really, really pretty. I am going to let it go because I do have so many other palettes that I really, really enjoy, but they are good shadows. The ones that you get in the kits, I happen to like them. A lot of people don't. My personal opinion is that I like them. Just the packaging is not. Oh, is not luxurious. 
This one I just got recently in the pop-up sale. I put the other two that I got in a giveaway, but this is the little Oh Snap palette with the gingerbread from Violet Voss. It's a really, really pretty palette. I love the tones. I love the red and the oranges and then the black that I'm able to deepen up my crease or make a bit of a more intense look. So I just got her. I'm keeping her. This is another palette from the Venice Beach collection called the Boho from Lorac. You can see it's got the little sunglasses, which is really cute. This is a very, very simple palette. It's got four shadows, and these you can use as highlighters or shadows. The only thing is they are all metallics. They do perform beautifully, but I think I'm going to let this one go because I know I just prefer not to have to reach for more than one palette for the most part. Okay, here is a really nice neutral palette that I am going to keep from Tarte. Of course, I think you know where I'm going to keep it. Well, it's called the Sex Kitten, but it's got a kitty on it. And it's very, very simple. It's very neutral. It has enough matte to shimmer ratio. There's another Makeup Geek palette, again, that I got in the sale. This one, unfortunately, came crushed. I didn't make a big fuss out of it probably really repress it by putting the alcohol in it but like I have time for that this shimmer I mean look at it it's absolutely stunning I wish it was intact but nonetheless here's an elf palette I had gone crazy one time about maybe two years ago I think it is could be and I bought a whole bunch of elf palettes these are really nice palettes they are generic looking and plain but I think they perform really really well I am gonna let this one go again because I have others that I enjoy more but I think these little palettes they were ten dollars each I think that they were worth it I think that they've improved even more upon their formula but I'm gonna let that one go here is a Viseart palette this palette I think was originally eighty dollars and I got it one of them I got in my box, the other one I paid like $12 for, which is an absurdity. This is just a very neutral matte palette. They perform beautifully. They are stunning. They are amazing. I think for the price tag, boy, could they do some improvement on their packaging. But nonetheless, I didn't pay the full price for it, so I'm happy about that. This is from Lovecraft Beauty, and I really enjoy their shadows. This is such a unique palette. This shirt wow, Leanne, chartreuse green is the standout of the palette. It does have three neutral colors, your typical brown. This particular gold doesn't always look good on my eyes because just I think of my skin tone, but I've still tried it. I want to play with it some more. I hadn't heard of the brand until I started getting my boxes, but this one, and there's another one somewhere in my collection that I really, really like. This is one of the first palettes that I got in one of my boxes when I first signed up. Either that or I got it in my FabFitFun. From Real Her, it's called the number two shadow palette. It says do your squats. Okay. It is a completely neutral palette. And honestly, I haven't reached for it that much. And I should. I mean, it's a basic palette. This is a matte with some of the glitter particles in it. It's very, very light. Uh, the pigmentation isn't huge. So I don't think you have to worry about it being overly pigmented and having to struggle with it. I have to give it more love. It's been in one of my drawers here and I haven't played with it in a while. Here is another Violet Voss palette. This is the Essentials. This one is really nice. I think I'm going to let this one go because I'm looking at it and I'm going, how often do I use that the color story? And I'm around Christmas time. Whenever these came out, the Makeup by Mario collection, I was not interested in most of his collection because it just seemed so complex and way too complicated for just an everyday person who wears makeup. But I did want to try his formula. And this was one of his little curated palettes. I think I tried it once and it was okay, but it has one matte and then three shimmers. So I either had to do a really, really quick look or I had to pull from another palette. From what I remember, they, they did perform nicely. That's a beautiful, beautiful shimmer, metallic. I'm glad that I didn't pick up more from the collection. If he comes out with more things, and you know, it is rather pricey, so I'm glad to try it, but I'm also happy I didn't pick up more of it. There's another Violet Voice palette, creme brulee, right in front of my face, for goodness sakes. 
this one's a really pretty palette. I think my only complaint that it doesn't have a matte shadow that's deep enough to really darken things up. If you want to do that, you have to use the shimmer, which is not always bad, but I always prefer that deeper matte. Again, these are soft and creamy, even more so than the others. So I'm going to keep her. We're on a roll. This is the Berry Burst palette. This is more of that um, pinkish, reddish kind of color story. I've used this one, I think, a little bit more. Again, I love the pinks. I love the color story. I love the choice in shimmers. You can even go a little bit more neutral if you just went with this row here. But I like that you put them in the two rows. So you have a quick, easy option uh, to make in the morning when you have, you know, your 15 minutes to try to get yourself out the door. And one last one of her fruit-sized, fun-sized... <laughs> Oh, the Fruit Sorbet palette. This one is a little bit more colorful and more intense. And I think I'm going to let this one go as well. If I'm not going to use the palette, I want somebody else to. So bye-bye to that one. This is the Viseart Neutral Mattes. This also I got in the Boxy Charm sale. It's beautiful. It does have two pops of color, the blue and the pink. And I think they work because of the brown tones, but look at the intensity, this blue. I mean, that's, that's amazing. So happy I paid, what, $18 for it or something to that effect when it's an $80 palette. Don't know how they do it. Don't care, as long as I get the, the, the savings. This is the Cella palette. Again, we got it in one of our boxes. I do like the component because when you get more colors, you can always pop them out and change the color story. I liked it. I can't remember how long it stayed. That, I think, was the thing. The metallics are extremely intense. It's great because you have your neutral brown and a nice little peachy color. I think the mattes were a little bit weak. I'm going to hold on to it and try it a little bit more. So this is the Maybelline Soda Pop Palette. I liked this one a lot. I like the fact that it has the bigger bars of the mattes because you're going to use them more. It's a, it's a good palette. I mean, a lot of people knock the drugstore shadows, but I think for, you know, every day and the everyday person, I happen to like it. So I'm going to keep her because I like her. And she's cute. I will tell you now, these palettes will not leave my collection because I've been working on collecting all of them. These are my Marc Jacobs palettes that I get also at a ridiculous price tag. I believe they are $50 palettes and I've been picking them all up at the sales at BoxyCharm, which is the reason that I keep it. Ha ha. This one is the Fantasine palette. I believe I've only played with it one time. It's a neutral color story, but the shimmers in here are spectacular and I love the white packaging. I love Marc Jacobs shadows. They perform exquisitely. This one, I love the packaging on. It's just so gorgeous. I think I might have picked it up maybe for just the outside packaging and then, of course, for the inside. This one is called Electric. And oh my goodness, the shimmers in this one, especially that pink, holy smokes. It has three neutral mattes and a black that you can totally intensify your look. And then these three gorgeous shimmers. Yeah, love this one too. This one comes in just the plain black packaging. This is the Frivolux, also fairly new to my collection. Now this grape, you might think doesn't look good on my eyes but it actually does and what i love is this darker purple that is next to it it is on the cool tone side but they're cool tones that look good on my eyes especially this like pewter color here absolutely gorgeous i think i have one more but i don't know if it's in the other pile this one is the silver packaging totally fingerprinty this was the first one i bought this is the steel leto palette another cool tone but holy smokes this one this purpley grayish taupey just oh my goodness whenever i wear the palette you can see that big dip in it i always have to put that one predominantly on my lid you'll notice there are a lot of repeats as far as the mattes go but i don't mind that that way i don't have to reach for another palette to create my okay, it appears i have a few more Mor morphe palettes to go through i probably have some more of them as well this one is the 35 m this is another one that I enjoy that I've used quite a bit because I really enjoy the green looks that I get out of it as well as these cooler purple tones but I thought those were the unique colors and you can go even more with the taupey brown look I think it's variant enough that I like it and I want to keep it in my collection 
This is the Mini James Charles, 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 Charles palette. I didn't buy the big one, but when the mini one came out and it was on sale, I thought I would give it a shot. I do enjoy the color story. I don't think that the formula was all that, in my opinion. I like the way it performs, but if you'll notice, there are the same color stories in so many of the other Morphe palettes that I pulled up. I could get the same look from this palette as I could with any of the other palettes from Morphe that I have showed you. I'm going to keep it. This one is the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2. I don't have her original palette. I never got it, and I won't get it now because of the formula change. I've only used this one about twice, and the look that I did was the red look, and it was really, really gorgeous. I like the color story. Again, more purples, and I haven't really used uh, the yellows too much. This matte red, though, it's got the glitter particles in it. It's very fallouty, but it is an intense, intense red and i like it so i'm going to be keeping this one these were makeup forever palettes poor makeup forever they've kind of fallen off the love list of a lot of people this is one of the first ones that i ever bought from makeup forever this one is the i'm trying to find the name of it and i can not this one had a very vibrant color story they are all shimmers i think it's time for me to let it go so i'm going to be passing that one on this is the other one that i got again i for some reason, I don't have the names. More of that blue and a little bit more of the cool toned. Less vibrant, but still some pretty, pretty colors. It's also one that I am going to let go. This is the Morphe 9A. It is an extremely neutral palette. I think I received this in one of my boxes. Hmm. I probably have all of these colors in the other larger Morphe palettes. So I think I'm going to let this one go as well. This is a Becca eyeshadow palette that came out, I believe, two Christmases ago. If I'm wrong, correct me. It had beautiful, this is the Apres Ski collection. I also have the face palette. This is a very light and neutral palette. You don't get any intense looks out of it, but I really, really did enjoy the way they performed, and I liked the looks that I got out of it. But the I think the complaint that many people had was there was no intensity as far as really dramatic looks. These are the Troll and Pure palettes. They're, I think this is their second um, collection. I struggled with these so, so much, and I was really disappointed, but I'm keeping them because there are certain colors that I really do enjoy. This one worked fairly well on me, but I keep it mainly for this center color, which is off the charts amazingly gorgeous. This one was called Funk. This one is classical. They were all based on music genres. This one performs the best, I think, because it is a neutral palette. This one was the Techno palette. This color story did not work for me whatsoever. The standout of it is the purple in the middle, which is the only reason that I'm keeping it. But uh, the color story was horrendous on me, made me look like uh, I had a disease. This is from Patrick Starr when he did his collection with MAC. It's a very, very neutral palette. Three mattes and one shimmer. It's really cute. I like it. I'm probably going to keep it for, because it was a limited edition thing, um, it wasn't anything that, you know, blew my mind in any way. Just a neutral, pretty palette for an everyday look. Here's the Laura Lee Los Angeles Boss Babe palette. This one's really nice. I liked the, all of the colors really, but the yellow, the goldish one just didn't really work on my eyes too much. I also have her Nudie Patootie palette, which I love. It's a beautiful, gorgeous palette. These were, I think, her first releases, the little mini ones. I'm probably going to keep this one, and I think the vibrant one I'm going to be passing along. I keep this one for its packaging. I'm a packaging, you know, nut. I think you know that by now. This is from Pure, and it is their... Good Times palette. I mean, look at the packaging. It's just so pretty. And it comes with a little brush, which forms beautifully. I think I'm going to put this on my eyes tomorrow because I really like it. It's just, as I said, the cuteness factor. And the fact that it comes with a little baby brush. Here's the Pure and Barbie collection. This is the first one. I did not pick up much from the second collection. I adore this palette, first of all. The packaging on it, I mean, just, it's absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And I loved the way the shadows performed. I like the color story. This is a black with gold in it. 
gold speckles. You don't see them tremendously on the eyes, but they do add a little subtleness of just a little extra oomph. I love it. It's gorgeous. Keeping her. This is the Pure Be Your Selfie palette. Very simple cardboard packaging. It's really pretty. Again, a nice little neutral palette. I think that they perform really well, but I'm going to pass it along. As you can see, I have so many of the same. This is from Crown, and this was the Glam Metals. I got this in one of my boxes. It's got the little, you know, rock vibe going along with it. It's a very cool toned palette. I don't remember whether the colors looked good on me. I'm going to have to try it on and do a look with it and see if it's something that works for me. This is the Pure and Boxy Charm palette that we received. Everybody despised this palette. <laughs> I didn't mind it too much. Do I let this one go? Yeah, I'm probably going to let it go. There might be somebody out there who will enjoy it more. I did use it quite a bit. There are some dips in the colors that you can see. This was the original Pure Trolls palette. I told you they did two collaborations with them. You can see it's very dirty because I used her. It was a cute color story. Teal color was one of my favorites, but I think I'm going to pass it on to somebody. Another BoxyCharm palette. This is the Pure Festival palette. I haven't played with this one enough to make a determination on how much I love it. I think it's a nice color story with just a couple of pops of color. It does some, have some of that glitter, and it's a very adherent formula. I'll probably keep her for a while. This was the Pure Masquerade palette. I didn't get a lot of use out of this one, I think because... It only had the one matte brown shadow and then those shimmers. Then it had four face products, which of course you can use for your eyes as well. I don't know. I think I'm going to play with it a little more and really see how I feel. Let's take a break from Pure for the moment because you must be getting overwhelmed by all the Pure. But this was the Tetris and Ipsy palette. Uh, we got one in a kit and then I bought the whole set in their Ipsy sale. I loved the nostalgia of it. This is the block party. I honestly haven't used it very much. I think maybe twice. I'll have to give it another go. It has two sh uh, lighter matte shades and then those four shimmers. And this is the Game On palette. Also from the Tetris collection. That blue is gorgeous in the corner there. It is super, super intense. You only have this orangey matte and that blue and the rest are shimmers. I'll keep her. Oh. One of my favorite palettes. This is the Wet n Wild Pac-Man collection. These were so good. Mine came broken, which was fine. It's really good shadow. Again, the nostalgia of it, I absolutely love. This one here, oh my. It is my favorite. I love her. And yes, I'm going to keep it because she is so freaking cute. This is the I Heart Revolution, the One True Love palette. These were just okay. It didn't wow me. The colors are not as pigmented as I like them. I bought it because I thought it was a comparison to this one, the Glitter Storm palette from Ciate London that I absolutely love. It didn't compare in my opinion, and I'm going to just let this one go because I do have uh, the Glitter Storm palette that I adore. But the packaging is fun. Here is my Glitter Storm. Just absolutely love, love, love this palette so much. And I just love playing with the packaging that's, uh, you know. Here's the Sephora palette, the winter one that they came out with, I think, last year. It had a little fox on it, which is why I liked it. But they're very, very cool tone shadows. And these are the grays, and the gray cool tones just don't work for me. So I'm going to pass her along. Moving on to another palette that I just love. This is the Jessica Rabbit palette from Ciate London. Oh my goodness gracious. I love it. It's a fairly simple color story, but I like it. And as I said, the nostalgia of this palette is everything. This one I have to play with more. Again, I can't get to all of my stuff. This is the pure out of the blue palette. The packaging is a bit bulky, but it's so freaking cute because it has a little vanity mirror Oh no, I think it burned out. Yep, I mean it was bound to happen eventually. 
This is a pretty palette. It looks kind of like a lot of other pure palettes, but this color is really cool. It's a glitter, but it's just an iridescent, like, white glitter. And again, it has that sticky base that I really like. I'm going to keep it. I'm so sad that the light burned out, but that was the inevitability of when you buy a palette that's got a, you know, lighted little makeup mirror vanity in there. So this is the It Cosmetics Superhero Palette. I think they perform really, really well. They have them cordoned off into two different eye looks. You're not going to get anything super dramatic out of it, but if you are a neutral lover, like the packaging, the way I can hold it in my hand, it's pretty unique and different. I'm going to keep it. Uh, hopefully, I will grab for it more often when I want to do some neutral looks. This is from BH Cosmetics. It's the Glam Reflection Palette. This one's called Smoke, and it's very, very pretty. I just didn't the color story overall too much for me it has a lot of cool tones and for some reason some cool tones work for me some don't so i am going to be passing this one on here's the pure festival 2.0 palette i love the packaging look at that holographic wow ness holographic ness you know what i mean Again, very, very similar color stories. They tend to do that a lot. I really do enjoy this one, though, this charcoal uh, metallic. It's really pretty, very smooth and creamy. I am going to keep this one, and I don't even think I've played with it more than once, so I will have to give her a shot. This is the Pure Visionary palette. This one is kind of a classic. I've used this one quite a bit. It's definitely a little bit more dramatic than the others, but it's a great everyday palette. As I said, there's some serious dips in here. And also with this one, you can take out the colors, rearrange them, and or replace them. I never do, <laughs> because it's not like I run out of shadows or anything like that, ever. But I think it's a cute concept. This is the Pure Soiree Diaries. Very standard neutral palette. It has eight mattes and four shimmers. It is great for the everyday, just neutral toned lover. And I'm going to pass this one along. I was so excited to get it, and then I found myself not reaching for it as much as I thought I would. So I'll let her go. This was a great palette. This was the BH Cosmetics and Carly Bible palette. You can see how much I used this palette. I didn't use the face products very, very much except for this one. And I got a lot of good use out of it. So I'm going to let her go. Next one up, I have the Too Faced Then and Now Anniversary Palette. It is absolutely obnoxiously huge, but the packaging is so freaking adorable. This was their anniversary collection where they put the shades from 1998 and then the shades from 2018 which is when this came out i like a lot of them i'm definitely keeping it the split pans over here kind of annoy me sometimes because it's hard to get just the one color but i'm really glad i picked it up of course you know i bought it on sale not when it first came out because that's how i roll but i'm really glad that i did this was my very first colored rain palette that made me fall in love with the colored rain shadows and this is going to become important in a minute when i get to something else this is a very large palette this is an amazing palette the shadow formula is unbelievable is made in the usa take note of that this one is supposed to be like a highlighter it's just not a color that looks great on me as a highlighter, but I do use it sometimes as a topper for my other shadows, but this one is like my favorite matte. They're so smooth. They're so amazing. It's a bit powdery, but it blends. I mean, look at the intense pigmentation there, and it does translate onto the eyes like that. This is the other colored rain palette that I have. This one is the Queen of Hearts. A little bit more laid back, very, very simple packaging another gorgeous palette this one's a little bit more on the neutral side it may appeal to more people again the performance of the shadows is incredible i absolutely love it also made in the usa this is the laura lee los angeles nudie patootie palette i have not purchased her second one yet i do plan on doing so it's exactly what it says it is a nude palette every day it's got a nice range of shimmers and mattes and some metallics and I just uh, yeah I really like it this palette I also bought on sale 
If you notice, I very rarely pay full price for anything. I'm a cheapskate. What can I tell you? It's the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. Love the packaging. It's heavy duty, very nicely done. I really like this palette. I like the color story. There are lots of different looks that I can get with it. You can see I've dipped into it quite a bit. I don't have any of the mini ones because I figured if I have the big one, I really don't need the mini palettes. Those are $25 each, which I think was a quite a bit. They are on sale, I believe on Nordstrom Rack for like $10 dollars. That price is worth it, but I'm going to be keeping her. These are the colored rain palettes that I got in one of my boxes, either Ipsy or BoxyCharm. I know you guys will tell me. This one's called the Vineyard Soiree. It's very pretty. These are made in China. What I did find out is that colored rain sold them the packaging and either Ipsy or BoxyCharm formulated, they didn't formulate the shadows, but they filled the packaging with whatever formula. Maybe Colored Rain gave them the formula and they made them in China. It's not that things in China are made badly, but it is definitely going to be different because of the way the ingredients are sourced in different locations. There are differently sourced ingredients in the USA than there are in China. So I found that these did not perform as well as the palettes that I have. I was a little bit disappointed. I am going to let that one go, but I just thought that you guys should know about the difference of where they were made. Old Mimosa Moment. This is a really, really neutral palette, but it's pretty though, because I do like the oranges. I will still use it, but I really think that they do not perform the way the original ones that I have, which doesn't make sense to me. Why would you want to put a lesser quality shadow and make people think that they don't want your shadows when the real product is so much more amazing? This we also got in a box. Um, this is the Palm Springs Dreams palette from Too Faced. Too Faced in their packaging. I will say it over and over again. They will they will suck me in every time. This is metal and it is a little bit magnetized. It's a really pretty palette. I happen to enjoy it. This is the peanut butter and jelly palette from Too Faced. They always come with the little booklets that give you looks in the classic metal packaging. It's got the orange tones and the grape like the peanut butter and jelly. I am going to pass this one along because it's not a color story that really thrills me anymore. I'm glad I kept the box. This is from Tarte. This is the Make Magic Happen palette. Very neutral palette. Very pretty. I think the shadows perform well, but I am going to pass this one along. This is also from Colored Rain. I bought this one on their website. It is a smoke show palette. Actually, I think I got this one in one of their mystery bags. It's really pretty, but it's not a color story that I'm super drawn to. I'm on the fence about keeping it and passing it along. Maybe I will play with it a couple more times and then make that decision. This is the Too Faced Tutti Fruity palettes. This one is Razzle Dazzle. Love, 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 love these palettes. Oh, they still... They have that scent. It really smells like raspberries. This one is my favorite shimmer, as you can tell. I will not get rid of it until it tells me that it is no longer good. This one was the pineapple palette, sparkling pineapple. This one doesn't have as strong of a scent as the others. This color is like a duochrome. It shifts between purple and green. This is really very much a topper but it's a heavy topper, but it's so like metallic and gorgeous. Love it. I wish it didn't lose its scent so much because that's what, that's part of my enjoyment in a lot of the Too Faced palettes and the Tarte palettes is that amazing, amazing scent. This one, I haven't even touched yet. It is the Too Faced Natural Matte palette. I got this in one of the boxes. I love the packaging. I mean, this is just amazingly gorgeous with the domed top and the attention to detail. It's a really, really neutral palette with an amazing scent. Absolutely keeping it. I'm going to have to do some neutral looks and put this baby on my eyes. Uh, she's staying with me. I love her. I don't even know her, but I love her. This is the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself. I think I also got this one in one of my boxes. Packaging is beautiful. I always liked their little round palettes, although they're difficult to store. That's why I keep them in the boxes. The only problem is there is only one matte. It is a very, very light matte neutral shade. 
which practically disappears even on my skin tone. I do like the color story, but they needed a few more mattes in here, and I do have to pull from another matte palette in order to make this work, unless you just want a beautiful, just all-over shimmer look, and, and that's totally fine, but for my purposes... Now, that's what I need. It also, of course, comes with a highlighter, which I would just use as shadows for the most part, unless I want some more drama. But I'm going to keep it because I, I do like the way they perform. How are we doing, guys? Are you hanging in there? Are you still with me? If you are still with me at this point, then leave me a puppy emoji down below. That way, that way I know it'll stand out. Because we're not even close to being halfway done. I have all of my other Too Faced palettes, which I'm going to be keeping. I'm telling you right off the bat. This one is the Gingerbread Extra Spicy. It may not smell like gingerbread, but I love it. I've seen this pop up in TJ Maxx, so if you are interested, keep your eyes out for it. We'll be keeping that one. This is the original one that they came out with two years ago. That was last year's. This is the Gingerbread Palette. Again, the metal tins really pretty. They are, to me, repeat colors that they have in a lot of the other uh, Too Faced palettes, but uh, I, I don't care because I like the way they perform and they're super cute. This is the Pumpkin palette. I think this was this year's, as a matter of fact, the Pumpkin Spice. This one does not have a strong scent at all. I wish it did. A lot of repeat colors. I didn't quite get the whole story in, in this one. I wasn't complaining. I love the packaging, love the concept. It's a Too Faced palette. I'm sucked in. This one I've had for a while, and this is my first Metalton Too Faced palette, as a matter of fact. This is the Peach. I may have to get a new one because I've had this one for quite some time. Still has the peach scent. This had broken. Again, I can see these colors in all of the other palettes that I have. It's, it's just amazing to me how they can repeat the shadows and just... You know, nobody notices, but but I do, because like I've seen this green and this purple in so many other palettes. I still like it. I said I may just pick up another so I have a fresh one. One of my very favorite palettes is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold. I never owned the original Chocolate Bar palette. This was the second one. I mean, look at the packaging. This is beautiful. These two colors remind me of my Moschino and uh, Sephora palette. They are intense. They're beautiful. So keeping her... This is the Too Faced Festival palette. This one is so adorable because of the squishy packaging and the unicorn. This one only has two mattes, and the mattes are not deep enough for a lot of skin tones. So it does have some pretty duochromy colors, as you can see. That is the one I use the most. This is a nice color, so if you want to deepen it up with a shimmer, you can do that. But it was an okay palette. I'm glad that I got it at TJ Maxx because... I would not have been happy if I paid full price for it, but keeping it for the packaging and for some of those colors. This next section is one of my favorites, and it's my top drawer because I really do enjoy them. This is the Amor Caliente palette from Too Faced, and it is the Marial. I really, really love this palette. It's got some beautiful, vibrant colors, pinks and oranges. It is a their typical formula. It's a great formula. I like it, and I'm keeping her. Next up, we have the Anastasia ABH um, Reezy palette. The packaging, again, stunning. I did uh, crush one of the shadows when I dropped something on it. This is an absolutely gorgeous palette. I still don't use this blue so much. I may start trying to incorporate it in my inner corner or something because I tend not to reach for it. But I really do love the palette. It's messy. That's why I'm not holding it up too long. But I am keeping it. If it goes on sale again, I will let you guys know. This is the ABH Jackie Ina palette beautiful like faux snakeskin holographic packaging it's beautiful it's a little bit thicker than her usual ones but it is a well done well curated beautiful color story they perform gorgeously i'm very glad that i have it whether or not i like her doesn't matter i wish her well here is another palette that just happened to be hanging out in there. It is from e.l.f. This one was my favorite. It had cool tones, but I loved the way these blues performed on my eyes. I am going to keep this one. This was my very first Natasha Denona palette that I purchased for full price at $48. This shadow did come broken. This was the holiday palette number two. I think it says Capri. Always got compliments, so many compliments when I wore this. Uh, definitely keeping, still love it. It blows my mind that we were actually able to get all of those palettes for like, I think, 
$12 in all of the pop-up sales. Here's uh, one of the mini palettes that I own. Again, I paid full price for this. This is the mini Lila palette because I do not have the big Lila palette. It's three mattes and two of the metallics. I have to play with this more. I haven't given this one enough of a go to really determine uh, how much I love it or not. But I love her little tiny baby ones. They're so freaking cute you want to bite them. But I don't. Here is the classic and very first ABH palette that I ever purchased, which was the Modern Renaissance. I happen to love the fuzzy packaging. So many people complained. Sure, it's going to get dirty, but it's fuzzy. This is just a classic beauty that I love and will continue to love. We'll probably repurchase again once, you know, this one is, you know, no longer good. Just such a pretty palette. Here are some of my Naked palettes, the classic ones. This is the Urban Decay Naked 3. Very cool toned, neutral palette. This was, I mean, all the rage. <laughs> I sound like such an old person when I say that. But classic, beautiful. I still dip into it. That's why I've gotten rid of some of my other more neutral palettes because this is just classic to me and I will continue to use it. Here's the original Naked palette, which I got. When they decided they were going to cancel them, I knew that I had to pick it up. It was the fuzzy packaging. This was their first palette. Again, cool toned. This is a little bit deeper than the other. You know, they're just the standard tried and true. This is one Everin Decay really knew what they were doing with the releases that they were coming out with. Some have been questionable as of late. Here are two of the newer Natasha Denona five pin palettes that I got recently at that sale. This one is called number five. Two mattes and three shimmers. I always prefer the three matte two shimmer personally, but that is okay. I'm still trying to get used to this color and making it work on my eyes because it is that color. But this one is gorgeous. I, I love it. And then you have those three shimmers, which just, you know, there were no words. This was number one, by the way. They are the um, palette number five, but this was the number one. This one is the number seven. This one is gorgeous. You are going to get an intense blue look, which is why I haven't used it too often. And believe it or not, even though those, those are grays, they work so beautifully when you blend them with the blues that I actually really do enjoy it very much. Oh, the ever so controversial abh subculture palette when she still had her fuzzy packaging this i have a shadow that's broken so i do have to be cautious how i lift it up i can barely do it because that chocolatey shade which is a gorgeous gorgeous matte shade um is very broken i happen to like this palette it works just fine for me that interrupted so i don't remember what i was saying all i know is that i actually do like the palette this is the Alyssa Edwards palette, which can be found readily at TJ Maxx. I don't think this palette did extremely well. I love the packaging. It's vibrant and pink and exciting. It's a very, very vibrant palette, which is why I don't use it too, too much. When I do use it, I'll go for the neutral shades and then add like a pop of color. I should play with her more often and get some more use out of it. I liked it. I think that it performed well, but... Next up, one of my favorite palettes from ABH is the Norvina palette. Again, the fuzziness. I wish you hadn't gotten rid of it. This is a beautiful purple toned, but on the cool side palette. They do get very messy on the inside because they're such a soft shadow though. I have two more of the five pan Natasha Denona palettes. This was the holiday palette number one. This shadow also came broken and I've managed to squish it back in. It doesn't perform as well as it used to, but I still use it. I love the cranberry shades, even though these are slightly shimmery, not necessarily totally matte, but I do get some gorgeous looks and I can create a look using just this. This is the... <laughs> The Peak Palette, the whole controversial one from BoxyCharm, and it has four mattes and one shimmer. This is a beautiful color story, so easy to work with, so easy to create um, a nice look. You can get maybe two different looks out of it, in my opinion. Let me know how many looks you guys have been able to create with this palette. Moving on with ABH, I have the Riviera Palette. This is, I think, one of the first ones where she changed the packaging. This is more of like a, a canvas material, very nautical. That was the theme. I haven't enjoyed this one as much as maybe I should try to. It has some vibrant colors, but you can get a 
sort of neutral look out of it, but not too much because most of the shimmers are that really intense, uh, colorful shadow. This one is my favorite. It's like a gray, bluish silver. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's absolutely stunning. That happens to be the one that I reach for the most. Next up, we have the Soft Glam Palette. Fuzziness. A classic. The brush, I don't know where the brush is. It's probably on my desk somewhere in there. Very classic. Very... I think on the neutral side, this is just a great palette. Whenever you see it on sale, if you're looking for a nice neutral palette, that's one that I can suggest. The Sultry palette. Love the outside packaging. This one's very, very cool toned, especially because of some of the shimmers. It is a beautiful palette. I have enjoyed it. Loved the outside, the sparkliness of the packaging. It was so pretty. Moving back over to some naked palettes. I had gotten more naked palettes than I ever had when I got the mystery box, but this is the honey palette. And this is a beautiful color story. I love the looks. I'm normally not like a yellow and goldish type of person for the most part, but I get some beautiful looks with this. And uh, the classic packaging, which I'm glad they kept the same. This is one that I didn't have, and I'm so glad that I got it in that mystery box, the Naked Cherry. Love the packaging. Wore it the other day. I think I wore it on camera. I may not have mentioned it. It's just a beautiful berry look to it. Yeah, so glad that I got that mystery box. Let me tell you. And then this is the Naked Heat Palette. I like the different packaging where it slides out this way, and it's in a little box in here. It's nice. Again, it's neutral. I happen to like the mini heat palette that I have as well, but I don't know if you guys have this and what your thoughts on it. I haven't used it that much because I just really got it fairly recently. Next up, we have the Carly Bible palette, which again, I got on sale. And the packaging, I don't know, visually it bothers me a little bit. That's just because of my vertigo issues. So I don't look at it too much. It is really pretty though. It is a very pretty color story. Some duo chromes in there. I like it. I've played with it. And unfortunately, I usually create so many of the same looks when I pull for the palettes, and I have to start getting out of that. This was the limited edition palette, which is why I will absolutely be keeping it. I love this palette. This is the Prism palette. Fuzziness, beautiful, just, I mean, gorgeous aesthetic. A lot of people did not like this palette. I had absolutely no issues with it whatsoever. I definitely get some dramatic looks out of it, and I'm so glad that I have it because you cannot get it anymore. This is the LA Girl Hot Heat Palette. I love LA Girl shadows. I think that they perform amazingly. These are normally $20, so they're not that inexpensive, but there's always a sale of buy one, get one 50% off, or buy one, get one free, and that is when I suggest you get them. This uh, formula is so soft and so pigmented i highly recommend them here's another one this is the i don't know why they're both called hot heat but they are except obviously this one's a different color story this has some more of those vibrant blues and purples i really enjoy this one as well you can get some neutral looks if you want but when you have a palette like this why would you want to here is another BH Cosmetics palette. This one is the Sylvia Ghani palette. I got it at TJ Maxx for $7.99. I didn't know who she was, but I thought it was pretty. This is gorgeous packaging with the uh, faux snakeskin texture. Really pretty palette. Two colors over here that you can use as highlighters if you want. I haven't played with it that much. I think for some reason I just tend to pick up other ones. I am going to keep it and try to play with it some more though. Oh, these palettes. Oh, oh boy. I got these at less than half off, I think, when they had this amazing sale. This is the uh, Norvina collection. This is volume one. I wanted the three of them, but the third was sold out. I know that there's a four and I haven't gotten it. It is a very vibrant color story, but in the beginning, I felt a little bit overwhelmed about what to do, but now I just really go for a color story and I stick with that theme and make it more monochromatic. These were $60 originally, and she came out with basically three of them all at once, which was an impossibility for me to spend $180 and pick them all up. But I think for, you know, the half price, the 30 bucks, or even less if that's what I pay for them, 
absolutely freaking worth it. I said my favorite was the number three. wasn't able to get it. This is the number two. The packaging is gorgeous. These are such heavy weight palettes with beautiful full-size mirrors. It's amazing. Now this one I don't use as much mostly because of a lot of the pastel fluorescent colors which is why I may be getting rid of this one. I'm really not sure. I have to play with it more often, but, you know, I don't go for the pastel -y too much. But they are quite vibrant, and look at that yellow. I put it on top of a shimmer, but really, really pretty. It just, I kind of bought it on an impulse because I, I'd wanted to try them so badly. That's why I'd wanted the other. If I had a choice between the two, I would have picked up the Volume 3 instead of this one. But I'm still happy to have it, especially for the price that I paid for it. Here is a Milani palette. I think I bought this on sale in CVS. This is the Gilded Rouge palette. It does have two pressed glitters. I'm trying to remember how those glitters performed. It's a more loose glitter, but it did adhere to my hand, but I do believe that this is one that you have to use glitter glue with. I cannot remember. They might be $15, but again, with Milani, a lot of drugstore, you can always get them on sale. This was my very first Juvia's Place palette. It's the Nubian. This one came in a box. It was specially made. Juvia's Place shadows are outstanding. I own so many of their palettes and they do them so well. I'm keeping this one because when I want just a quick neutral, I will most definitely pull for this. And it's so cute and teeny tiny. I love it. Here is another Juvia's Place. This is the Saharan 2. This one is a very bold color story. These are her larger pans. I love this deep burgundy color. Normally when I pull for this, I go for these three mattes and then I will throw in one of the shimmers. This icy blue is gorgeous. I need to play with that one much more along with this deeper blue. I mean, look at the two of them together. Stunning. Never have a complaint about Juvia's shadows the way they perform. They are amazing. This one is the Zulu by Juvia's Place. This one's extremely vibrant. I haven't played with this one too much because I do get a little stuck with the color story. I'll have to give it some more love because they are beautiful colors, but again, I'm going to gravitate mostly towards the neutrals with just that single pop of color. Have to give that one some more love. Warrior 2 by Juvia's. This is just your classic, gorgeous, deep, neutrals that are going to give you that dramatic smoky look and they are amazing it is an all matte palette here we have an ace boute palette most of my ace boute palettes i've gotten in boxes and or purchased through the pop-up sales this is the oceanic palette this palette i mean look at that it is just oceanic is absolutely correct i love ace boute shadows they perform so beautifully this is i think one of my favorites when i'm looking for blues i don't pull for them too too often i love it here is the grandiose palette also from ace boute we got this in a box it is very very pretty it has a orangey pink uh, tone to it. I did a few looks with it. This is the Nostalgia palette. We recently got this one. This one confused me because uh, of the outer packaging. I expected something so totally different from them. It's very pretty. It's very vibrant. I think I did one look with it, but it's too new for me to say goodbye to, so... This is called Classical Paradise. The about Ace Boutte is they have so many different shapes and sizes of palettes, it's hard to keep track. This one's also very, very pretty. Some brighter colors. This is Paradise Fallen. At least this color story definitely match matches the packaging because look at the gorgeousness of that. Those deep purples and some of them are cooler toned, but you also have those nice balancing mattes to go along with it. This, I think, is my favorite shade. It is so deep purple that it's almost black. It's very powdery, so you may get some fallout, but sometimes it's worth it. This is the Vintage Dawn. This one's really pretty, too. This is my favorite icy blue shade over here, but now that it's spring, I'm going to start using more of like the oranges and peaches. Not that you can't use them anytime you want, but you, you know where I'm going with that. Here's another Milani palette. This is the Gilded Noir. 
This is also very pretty. It's a little bit uh, noir is correct because it's a little bit more smoky. This is a gorgeous gray, just silvery toned shade. I'm going to have to play with these some more often because I'm on the fence, honestly, about them, whether or not I want to keep them. So I'm going to have to give them some love in the next coming weeks. Come on, Tuxedo. What is a video without one of my cats stopping by? This is Tuxie. Yes. Did you see how huge he is? He's no longer a tiny kitten. He's a very vocal kitten. And he, he wants to get out of my arms as quickly as possible. Now i got to clean my paws. This one is the Morphe Palette 9i. This one I'm just going to pass along because I have so many of these colors in the larger palettes that even though this blue is what really attracted me, it's a really, really pretty color, I'm just going to let this one go. I have just way too many of that. Of course, I could say that about all my palettes, but you know what I mean. This is the Revolution and Rachel Leary palette. Again, I wasn't sure who she is. I thought this was beautiful. I liked that you had a bronzer and three highlighters. This one could be used as a blush, but it was way too shimmery for me. See, I really liked the way this bronzer shade looked on me, which is why I was keeping it. Should I keep a palette, an entire palette, just for a bronzer shade? Probably not. So I'm going to think about this one, maybe getting rid of this one. Here's another Revolution palette. This one is the Fierce Wild Animal of the packaging. It's a uh, little textured on top. This one is really beautiful color story, oranges and fiery colors. I like it, but believe it or not, I, I think I'm going to let it go. I know. This, this is a very hard thing for me, letting my things go, but I, I'm going to. Kevin Aquan palette that I got in TJ Maxx. It was on clearance for $9. It said it was $59 with a how much value? I forget. $102 value. Never believe that. This is the Jewel Pop Face and Eye Palette. I only bought it because it was $9 and it was purple. Yeah, I admit that. It has a fairly decent mirror. It's it's pretty. Um, I don't find myself reaching for it extremely often because it really has only shimmers, some with varying degrees of their metallicness or not. And I thought that I would really like this powder. It's... I don't know. It doesn't quite look great on my skin tone. This is a very pretty blush, but again, it's also shimmery, which is not always my favorite thing. I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit longer and try to get some looks out of it. If I don't find myself successful, I will be passing it along. This is the I Heart Revolution. I can't keep track of all these different things. This is the Tasty Avocado Palette. Look at the packaging. I mean, the cuteness factor. I've worn this a couple of times and you guys have complimented me on my look, so thank you very much. I have to be very careful about the greens. The pastel greens don't always look good on my skin tone, but there are a couple of shades in here that I'm so drawn to. And this was the color I think I was wearing when I got the compliments. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous shimmer shade in that like tealish blue. I'm going to hold on to her and make my decision. This palette, I love the packaging. It's from Urban Decay. It was the, what is the metal something palette? I can't remember. It was metal something or another. Packaging was gorgeous. It was interesting because this slides out and you have the mirror in the middle. They are all shimmer colors. Now, I love them because they had a cool tone side and a warm tone side. It was the absolute bejeebies out of this palette. I absolutely loved it. I would um, use them as toppers on top of other shadows. I am going to keep this. I don't reach for it as often because since I received this palette as a gift, I have acquired a lot more since then. Here's another LA Girl palette. This is the, again, Pro Artistry, and I don't remember the name. Another stunning palette with lots of a uh, lots of lots of neutral mattes and then those gorgeous intense metallics and for goodness sakes they are absolutely intense when i do a lot of my green looks i reach for this one uh yeah for uh, the drugstore i think they are amazing i recently picked up a bunch of palettes from the cara brand this one i got in tj maxx this is the abu dhabi palette her artwork amazingly beautiful gorgeous this is a fairly neutral palette i think it could have been made a little bit smaller in my personal opinion but 
I find that her shadows perform beautifully. I just think I'm going to pass this one on only because I like some of her other palettes better and the color stories speak to me a little bit more. So this one is going to get passed on. This is the Pure Etienne palette. I had wanted this one for so freaking long and then when I got it I haven't really played with it very much. It's a very cool toned palette with a little bit of redundancy in some of the shadows with that pop of blue but it's like a bluish purple so it's a little bit different. I like it but honestly I haven't played with it enough and when I open it I'm not as inspired as I think I want to be so I'm going to pass this one on. Here is yet another Morphe palette. Which one are you? 15D. I think I also received this one in a box. It's pretty. It's got an orangey tone to it. A little bit of redundancy, but not as much as some of the larger ones. I think I'm going to keep this one for a little bit, play with it, see if I love it or still love it. This is from Lorella Cosmetics. I have been getting uh, several of the mystery bags, which I absolutely love because I thought the things that you got in them were amazing. This is the Sweet Valentine palette. Cute little packaging. It was around February. Look at the gorgeousness of this. I have to play with this again. I only tried it that one time. Look at this bubblegum pink shimmer here. Oh, wow. So, so pretty. I enjoy her shadows. I think they perform beautifully. And this is a color story that just speaks to me so much. So, of course, I'm keeping her. This is also from Lorella Cosmetics. It is the Golden State California palette. This is another beautiful one with some really, really vibrant colors. It's got a lot of different color stories. You can go with the blues. You can go with um, some of the more neutral colors. And then they got a nice little purple pinky section. I like them a lot. I don't know. Should I get another mystery bag from her? What do you guys think? This one I got recently, and I was going to show it on camera, and then for some reason I never did. It is the Hank and Henry Teddy Palette. I think I bought this in the BoxyCharm pop-up sale. And then it's got a teddy bear on it. Hello, how can you not? It is really, really pretty. It is dark. It's slightly cool-toned. This is my favorite shimmer a lot. Oh, look at that. So, so pretty. I've only had it for about a month or so. Yeah, it's got a teddy bear. I like teddy bears. This one I've had for a while and honestly I'm going to keep it because I purchased it on a shopping trip with my mom when I took her makeup shopping and just bought her whatever she wanted and and I can't I just can't get rid of it I, I'm that way. It is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Foil Palette. This is supposed to be a highlighter palette and I will definitely use this one for a highlighter but I use these as eyeshadows and they are so freaking amazingly gorgeous as eyeshadows. I keep this and this is one palette that I don't mind reaching for like a secondary palette because of the absolute gorgeous tones. I mean look at that. I will as I said I'm keeping this one forever no, no matter what but I still love keeping this one like right close to me so that when I use a matte palette and I want I decide that I want that pop of shimmer I reach for that. Oh, and here's my other Zodiac palette. This is the original one. The other one was the Love Palette. This is another absolutely gorgeous palette. It's got the purples in it that I love. The formula on these baked shadows is so, so good. They are so intense. So if you're going to go with subtle, you're more likely to want to use the row of mattes uh, around the circle in a part. Here's one Hank and Henry palette that I really don't know if I've played with very much. Again, there's so many things that I never show you guys just because of lack of time. It's called the In Living, Living in Color. In Living Color was a show back in the 80s and 90s, I think. The thick packaging on here, four mattes, and the rest are shimmers. I don't even know if I've tried this on my eyes yet. <laughs> and I have to because I like it. I think the packaging could have been less bulky in my opinion, but I think it was just going for an aesthetic. So I've got to give this one a go and see if I like it. I had to take a break and get some more coffee, and i got to touch up my lipstick. I've been filming for about two and a half hours. This is going to be like a 90-minute video, guys. I hope you're up for it. Moving on, I have my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea palette. I waited so long for this thing to go on sale, and I finally got it on sale at Sephora. Look at the packaging, for goodness sakes. It's like a little under the sea under the sea okay beautiful 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 there are four glitters in here 
they're fairly adherent, but I still use glitter glue. I don't know. I just, I just love this palette. For the packaging, you can still get neutral looks if you want. You don't have to use the uh, glitters in there, but that is the fun part of it. And uh, yeah, really glad that I got it. This is the Ulta Melissa Michelle palette. There are so many of these influencers that I'm just not aware of because there's so many influencers, you know, around. It was really pretty. I used it quite a bit, as a matter of fact. I loved that they had this little brush in here to pick up the glitters. I'm on the fence. Maybe I will keep it for a while. If I'm finding that I'm not in love with it anymore, I will definitely pass it on. This is a cargo palette. I think I received this in... Oh, I one of my mystery bags that I did a long time ago. This is the Around the World palette. I like the packaging a lot. It's well done. Poor Cargo doesn't get enough love either. This is an extremely neutral palette. It does come with a brush, although I think they could have put a different brush in here personally. It's neutral, but it's also cool toned, and they're not colors that I reach for often, so I am going to be passing this one along as well. This I picked up at Nordstrom Rack. I got it on clearance. It is the Laura Mercier Editorial Eye Palette Intense Clays. This is a very difficult palette to use, and I haven't had the time to sit down and play with it. I love that silicone matte packaging, even though it looks freaking a mess. The reason I say they're difficult to use is because they are clay shadows. They're very intensely pigmented, and you are going to get a dark, smoky look. They go on a little strangely. It's hard to explain, but it's, it's like a clay, and you can't blend them out the way you typically do, but it is such a pretty palette because you layer these metallics on top of the mattes, and you get this incredible look to them. And then this is just like um, a mat for you to set your eyes because you most definitely want your eyes to be set when you put these on. You can't do a one-two quick and easy look with this. You have to have patience. So that may be good for somebody and bad for somebody else. This is another Hank and Henry palette. This is the Las Armadas palette. I don't think I've really used this one either. You want to talk about intense and vibrant? Holy smokes, this purple glitter is off the charts. The only really neutral shade is this darker, like purpley chocolate brown. Um, it really interested me, so I'm going to have to try it. This is the Revolution Roxy palette, Roxasaurus. Look how pretty this is, uh, that metallic blue. It does have some pastels, but I got some really, really pretty looks out of it, so I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit longer. This is the Fenty Beauty Moroccan eyeshadow palette. We got this in like the uh, boxy pop takeover uh, that we got all Fenty products. This palette was on sale at Sephora forever. Beautiful packaging. And I happen to like the color story. I haven't given this, given this one a lot of love as of yet, so I'm going to keep it, put it towards the front of my collection so that I can uh, play with it some more. This is the Tarte Tardist Pro palette. I love the packaging. It's heavy duty typical of the Tarte colors, but then you have these uh, transforming colors over here, the uh, metallics, and uh, you can get some really, really pretty looks out of it. They did curate them nicely in rows, so you get some idea. Here's another Juvia's Place palette. This is the Masquerade Mini. I wanted the Mini because the uh, regular Masquerade just had larger pans, and I don't need the larger pans. It's more vibrant. You can still go with some neutral... Um, looks if you want to. This one's really, really pretty because of the glitter particles in it as a matte. It does dissipate a lot, but um, it blends out beautifully. So another beautiful Juvia's Place palette. Here's the Tardis Pro Remix. I think I bought this one on sale. I love this. Just like the other, but it's a little bit more colorful. It has a lot more uh, shimmers and metallics in it. These are some of my newest Juvia's Place palettes. Uh, this one I bought the whole kit that came with two lip glosses, I think. And this one is the Nubian Glow palette. I love this. It's orangey and bright and sunshiny. It looks like I'm wearing a bowl of sunshine on my eyes when I do wear it. I also bought the purple one. I didn't get the whole kit with this one, but this is the Nubian Royal. Oh, the purples right up my alley. Love it. I get some gorgeous looks with this one. The taupes. Look at how beautiful these are. These have that 
subtle purple undertone that I think the tones, how many times can I say tones? They look really good on my eyes, so I love it. It's neutral, it's beautiful, but you can still get some drama. I cannot believe that I still have the energy to keep going, but that's what this is for. Isabel Bedoya, it is the Lumina Luminati Cosmetics X Isa. I think we recently got this in one of our boxes. I haven't had this long enough to really decide whether I want it. The color story doesn't thrill me overall. I'm going to keep it for a little bit longer. As I said, I will. it will probably wind up in another declutter at some point. This is the Shayna B. Miami palette. Simple packaging. Very, very pretty. You have some nice neutrals on the bottom here and some really intense metallics. I don't remember if these lasted well on my eyes, and I like the look that I created with it, so I'm going to keep it. Sate London, this is the editor palette. We recently received this. I did not like the packaging. It seemed very um, cheap. Almost reminded me of Beauty Crop, as a matter of fact. It's very pretty. I'm on the fence about the color story and if I really, really like it or not. Again, I haven't had it long enough to really give it a fair shot. I used it a couple of times, but I still have to make my determination. This is from Kylie Cosmetics. Nice palette. It came out two Christmases ago. Cute packaging. I liked it. I like the color story. Um, when I first used this, I wasn't thrilled. I said, because some of these shadows got hard pan extremely quickly. The mattes, I think, performed well. I am going to keep it. I haven't picked it up in quite a while, so I'm going to give it another shot. Sipping pretty. Really, really pretty packet. Pretty. Pretty packaging. I liked this one, as far as the performance of it, a lot more. It's colors that I use. This is one of the matte shades with some glitter in it. A lot of it does... Um, sheer away, but it still looks really, really pretty on the eyes. Here's a ColourPop palette. I have a multitude of these. I just haven't gotten to them yet. This is the Lovebird palette. I love this palette. This is a glitter. People are mad at the glitters. I don't mind them, especially when I use this. It makes just such a pretty pop on my eyes. This is a Super Shock shadow, which is really just meant to be a topper. Gorgeous palette. Love it. Love ColourPop shadows. This is a Hip Doc palette. This is the Opulence. I can't remember, the, remember whether I bought this or I got this in one of my boxes. I know you guys will tell me. It's really pretty. It does have two pressed glitters. This um, red glitter is a little bit too intense. I mean, it's not an everyday look for me, but it's nice. The rest of the color story is good. Um... I think there's some random colors in here that I just don't necessarily agree with. I would have liked to see this blue be have been replaced with something else. I am going to keep it because I haven't had it long enough to really see if I truly enjoy it or not. This I picked up at one of the BoxyCharm sales. I didn't show you guys, I said, because it was that sale that I had like three products in it, but I'd wanted it for a while. It's the Violet Boss Flamingo Palette. This one came out quite a while ago, and I never picked it up at full price because, you know, that's uh, how I roll. It's cute because it's in a book style. I played with this a, um, a few times and it's very vi vibrant and I love the way it performs. I'm happy to have it in my collection, especially that I got it for such a good price. This is one of my newest ColourPop palettes and it is one of my favorites. I told you guys about it just in a couple of videos ago. I didn't think that I was going to like it because it was going to be too neutral, but let me tell you, the way this performs and uh, the look, I wore it in about three videos because I filmed so many in one day. It is, it's gorgeous. I reach for it all the time. I have to force myself not to grab for it on a daily basis. Do you remember I always talked to you guys about a Ciate Linton palette that did really poorly as far as the sales go, but I love it. It's the Astrolite's Jewel palette. I kept meaning to bring it on camera. Look at the packaging, first of all. Uh, it looks yellow when you look at it, but they are another company that does so well. This palette performs amazingly on my eyes. This color in the center that's like duo chromey, it's a topper, and I throw it. Let's see if it'll show up on my hand. Hold on. It's very light, but it's meant to be. As I said, it is a topper. And when you put it on top of any of these matte shadows, it transforms it and gives us this duo chrome look. I love this palette. I got it on clearance. I forget where, but I'm so glad that I picked it up. Here's another ColourPop palette. This is the Soul. I don't remember how I feel about it. I have to look at it to let you know. This is one of the ones in their plastic packaging. Yep, 
is just a bright and sunny, hence the name Soul. Now that spring is here, I'm probably going to be picking this one up more often. I did pick up the Frozen 2 palette on clearance for $12 at Ulta, which is not really a clearance price, but it was a limited edition. How cute that is. Very pretty. The purples uh, called my name. Again, it does have a pressed glitter in the middle. I, I like it. It's purple. I'm not hooked on Frozen. Unfortunately, when that movie came out, every single one of my voice students wanted to sing that song, and I was just like, please let it go. This is one of the little baby color palettes. It's the Make Up Your Mind palette. I think I'm on the fence about this one, but I'll let you know. It is in the cardboard packaging. Yeah, this one is just like the uh, bunch of shimmers and metallics, and um, am I making up my mind? think of, I've made up my mind that I'm going to let this one go. Ah, uh, this is my Sydney Grace Love Palette. Love, love this palette. It is on the cool toned side, but with some really, really beautiful shimmers in it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, her shadows just perform so amazingly. I love the packaging on this. It's just so classic. It's in that metal and, uh, I was introduced to them. I, she had a sale, and I took advantage of the sale. Oh, boy, did I ever, and uh, don't regret a moment of it. Here is the Mar palette. The Soul and the Mar palette from ColourPops went together. Again, plastic packaging. I am not as in love with this one as I am with the other, so I think I'm going to let this one go as well. This is another Sydney Grace palette. This one was already put together, just like the other one. This is the Chase Your Dreams gotta love the packaging of course i love the formula i'm not necessarily in love with the color story i am keeping it because i do love her shadows and i will try to play with it more it's just for some reason the color story doesn't scream at me like some of her other shadows do this we recently got this is from ibby beauty this is the fireside palette it's a gorgeous palette but again i was disappointed in the color story because it didn't scream what the outside packaging did to me but I wore it on the eyes, and I did wear the uh, the greens, and it looked so beautiful. IBY shadows are very underrated, in my opinion. This is also from IBY Beauty, and I think I got this one at the Ipsy. Yeah, when we did had the Ipsy Live, this is the Ocean Awakening palette. Look how gorgeous this one is. It's definitely divided into two sections that you can do two different looks. You can go with that blue-green look with the hint of purple, or you can go for the more sunny side sunshine look as well. Here is the Enlightened palette from IBY. I think we got this one in a box. Gorgeous packaging. Have not really played with this. This is more of a pastel -y look to it but it does have some neutral tones again this is a gorgeous purple that i love i have to play with this lavender one too because it's calling my name have to play with you more and then we have the city limits palette also from iby beautiful love that holograph this is a bit of a deeper more dramatic palette but it has a lot of uh neutral matte shades that i can mix and match with any of the shimmers and they will go beautifully Here's another Ace Boutte palette that must have been hanging out on the side. This is the Scarlet Dusk palette. I purchased this one in the pop-up sale. It's absolutely gorgeous. Very pinky, orangey. Uh, this is my favorite shade, the orange one. I love using that. It is a, it is a matte, and uh, I've gotten some good use out of it. Still new enough for me to really play with. This is my newest edition. I got this one in... I think my, oh yeah, my uh, FabFitFun mystery bag. It is from Jouer. Love the packaging. The face and eye palette. I have not played with this enough. I just recently got it. It's uh, fairly neutral, and you have those two pretty highlighters. You can use this one as a blush topper. Again, I am not one for shimmery blushes, so I do use it sparingly. But uh, it comes with a cute little brush in case you need one, and uh, I am happy with it. I have another ColourPop palette. This is the Wet palette. I got this one on sale. Love the packaging. I think this one came in sale like the wet and something else. I don't remember. Really pretty. Um, some really pretty intense blues in there. Uh, this white one has a bit of like a blue undertone, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, I gotta, gotta play with her some more. Here we have the Element of Surprise ColourPop. This is another gorgeous palette. This pink and the shimmer in the middle here is such 
a gorgeous pop of color and it really makes the palette stand out because you can go really neutral if you want with it but that pink to me makes it for sure this was my very first ColourPop, pa ColourPop palette. It is the cute AF, but it also says yes, please. They recently changed the packaging because this confused so many people. Look how dirty it is. I used the bejeebies out of this one. Very orangey with that yellow, and I've used a ton of it. Love it. This is the Dream Street palette, the collaboration with Kathleen Lights. I liked it, but it's definitely not my favorite color story. And mostly I use like the blues here. And now that I have so many more colors in my collection, I think that I can let this one go. This is the Main Squeeze palette from ColourPop. This is another one of my favorites. You can see how many repeat colors there are just repeated throughout so many of their palettes. But again, this is a color story that I love and I'm going to be keeping this one. This is another gorgeous palette. This is the Fortune palette from ColourPop. This is neutral, but it really does have some gorgeous tones that it, it's a very easy palette to work with and you can create some really nice looks. Anything like over the top, no, but you know, for a lot of people and for me a lot of the times, I don't want anything that's going to be over the top. I just want a nice, easy palette to use, so I love that one. This is the iconic London Sunset to Sunrise palette. I think... I know I got this one in a box and I think there was some controversy again with this palette because of the question of where it was made. Now mine got a little bit discolored. I don't know whether some of the glue has leaked into the cardboard. It doesn't seem to have affected the shadows anyway. Um, it is a very light palette with some interesting colors. I, I will continue to play with it. This is the Lorac Shine Bright palette. I picked this one up at some sort of sale. It seems to have the same color story as a lot of these uh, palettes. This was a holiday palette. It has some pretty purples and blues, some cool tone shades, which I do stay away from. I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit longer. And if I find myself not really reaching for it anymore, then I will probably pass it along because it is a beautiful shallot. Lorac makes some beautiful shadows. They're just so teeny tiny, though. Another Violet Voss palette. This is the Holy Grail, which it is another size of her palettes gorgeous yes neutral but it gives beautiful just pretty everyday looks and uh, i've been in love with it i've used it quite a bit haven't played with it i'd say in probably at least two or three months so this is going to go to the front of my collection so i can get some use out of her this is the bh cosmetics desert oasis palette i picked this up on sale don't remember where uh, I absolutely love this palette. This is one of my favorite BH Cosmetics palettes ever. It has this yellow highlighter in here that reminds me so much of the one in the Natasha Denona palette. This is just so pretty. This is my favorite shade. I use this for all of my transition colors. I mean, look how pigmented it is. This was really a super, super well done palette. I was very happy to pick it up because it was sold out for quite some time. This is a fairly new palette in my collection. I picked a bunch of these up from Cara Beauty at TJ Maxx for only like $6.99 when they're like $24, $25 palettes. It has that silicone matte packaging on the outside. Beautiful, incredible artwork. These are the magazine series. I mean, this is so freaking stunning. Let me hold it. It does have a blush. Again, I don't like the blush on me because... It has a little bit of shimmer in it, but if you go light enough, you can get away with it. It does have a gorgeous highlighter, and it does have a glitter, which I've tried once. It, w it lasted okay on my eyes. I didn't have any problem. It's just a pretty neutral color story, but I really enjoy it. If you can find these Cara palettes, which I've seen a lot at TJ Maxx, and you want to try them, highly recommend. I have one coming up that is going to be my favorite. This is from Wander Beauty. I got this in a box. It is their Seascape palette. It's pretty. It only has one matte and the rest are metallics or shimmers. I haven't used it too much, um, but it's a pretty palette. I like the way the sh shadows perform. So I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit longer. This is from Butter London. I also got this in a pop-up sale. It's the Teddy Boy palette. Look how cute this is. It's navy blue, pla blue, yes, blue packaging, and then it opens up like a book, which is super, super cute. It is a very neutral palette. But so far, I have liked, well, hello, winter, the way the shadows have performed. 
Hi, hi, Winter. How are you? How's my girl? You hanging out with Mama? You enjoying this? That you don't like chaos? I know. I understand. So I, I guess I have um a friend for um the time being who's just you're gonna just sit there. You know, that, that that's okay. She's she's just gonna hang out for a while. Clean the paws. I bought three of these palettes at Macy's. Did I talk about them in my last video that I recorded that I haven't put up yet? I, I don't remember, but I'm going to talk about them now. This is from the Beauty Crop, and oh boy, have these surprised the bejeebies out of me. This is the Mojito palette. Look at that color story. I mentioned in the other video, yes, I did talk about this one because I was wearing it, that it looked more vibrant online, but I can tell you that they lasted a good... I'd say six to seven hours at Macy's, $15 each. They, this was a whole series, like the drink series. This is the Strawberry Daiquiri. Look at that packaging. And that color story. This one, oh my goodness, it is it is a glitter, but it's, it's that adherent glitter, and it's iridescent. I am so shocked by these shadows because I tried a face palette from them that was just basura, in my opinion. And... When I saw these, I thought I would give them a try. I loved the theme of them, so I was thrilled. I have another one in here somewhere, and I will get to it. This palette I also got on sale. I don't remember whether it was, whether it was from Tarte or not, but yes, little girl, can I help you? All right. This was their holiday palette, I believe, from this year, as a matter of fact. Look at this. I mean, I could not resist... The packaging alone screamed at me. I do believe that this will pop out and you can save it. It comes with a liner and the Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. It also has a brush and it is such an incredibly beautiful palette. It does have some pressed glitters in there, but it has enough neutrals and enough shimmers that if you don't want to use the glitters you don't have to this packaging is just amazing i'm so glad that i got it on sale when i did well here's the other one this is the dawn gazing palette also from the beauty crop i picked this one up beautiful packaging again this is another really pretty the pink uh Press glitter is a bit much in my opinion, so I don't know how often I'll be using that, but the rest of them, I wore this one the other day, and it performs so well. This is the Royal Affair palette from BH Cosmetics. Do you want to know? I don't even know if I ever tried this palette. I have to take a look. I got it in TJ Maxx. I think I've only maybe swatched the colors once or twice, and... You know what? I'm going to pass this one along since it's such in good condition and brand new. Oh, actually, I got this in Kohl's. It was $18. This is the Picante palette from Carity. I believe we got this in one of our boxes. It's a very pretty palette. It has, you know, some neutral colors. There's no real, like, when you look at it, there's nothing that pops out to you like, oh my goodness. I haven't played with it too much, so I think I have to give it a little bit more love before I can make a final decision. This is also from Carity. This is the Smoke Palette. I picked this one up in CVS. They were having a buy one, get one free. This one's really pretty. I was surprised by the name and the color story on the inside. It's got some vibrant colors, but I do like how it's curated, and you can get varying amounts of looks in here, so I'm definitely keeping this one. Here's the Kyla Cosmetics Purple Palette. I only picked this one up because it was like 75% off at Ulta, and that's why I got it. Cute packaging, her typical. But the color story for me is cool toned and it doesn't truly work on my skin tone. I think the shadows performed well and this is a very heavy package. I really liked this purple and this one, but overall I think I'm going to pass it along because I have a lot of shadows that, as you can see, that I can use. This was the Ulta Beauty Frida Kahlo palette. I got the entire kit. I liked it. It was pretty. That green is really quite beautiful. I am going to keep this one for nostalgic purposes, and on the inside it says never apologize for who you are, and I absolutely love that sentiment, so that's why I'm keeping it. I also picked up the Kylie Jenner, this is the Blue Honey palette. I don't remember how I feel about this one. Let's take a look. Okay, it's called Blue Honey, yet yeah, look at the color story. Didn't make much sense to me. Again, I think I'm going to let this one go. These are so barely used 
And I know I'm not reaching for the color story, so I'll let that one go as well. This is the Seraphine Botanicals. I got this in a box. It's called Sakura and Sage. Comes in cardboard packaging. Very pretty. I like the purples on the outside. Um, it's a fairly boring palette overall. You do have that bright silver, which I'm not sure how it goes in here, but you have a shimmery bronzer and a peachy blush color here. I'm going to hold on to it and play with it, but I don't think I was overall highly impressed with it. Here are two palettes that you'd have to pry away from my hands because I love them so much. These are the um, Uma Beauty. This is Black Magic Savage. Yes, I do have these color stories in a lot of others, but these perform so well, are so pigmented, and just so gorgeous that uh, I, I love them, as I said. You'd have to pry them away from my hands to get them uh, me to give these up. This one is the Poise Palette, also in the Black Magic series. This one's a little bit more subdued, but I do love this pop of blue because it's like a bluish purple and it goes really really well with the other color stories but if you want more neutral this one is the way to go for sure here's the boxy charm palette this is called the hello charmer palette honestly this didn't perform too badly people are just really mad because they didn't want um, a palette in a box that were supposed to get high-end products and they didn't want a palette that was made specifically by them I actually liked it this is a pressed glitter it's a pink iridescent fairly adherent. It's just super pretty on top of the other shadows. As I said, I really didn't mind the palette and I have used it. This is the Sephora Glacial Glow Palette. This was two years ago. I think I love the packaging. They do come out with these every year. It has a nice mirror on it and also has two colors that you can use for highlighters if you so desire. It's got a pretty varying color scheme. It's got enough neutrals that you can get some good looks out of it. Now you want to talk about Cara Beauty palettes that I highly recommend. This is the Life of the Fiesta. Again, I paid $6.99 for it. This palette is, oh my goodness gracious. First of all, just look at the artwork. Amazing. Look at that color story. You can get so many varying looks in here. I did do a green look with it when I wore it, but I've also done the purples and I've done just the neutrals. Again, with the pressed glitters, I don't always use them, but if you want that extra va va voom, but originally a $24 palette for $6.99, you cannot, absolutely cannot beat that price. This is the Violet Voss Best of Life 2. I picked this up in the pop up sale. Haven't played with this one enough. It's a little bit, it's a lot of bit, a lot of bit. It's very different packaging from their usual. I said they have so many. This one opens up this way and you have double sided. Now this one's a little bit difficult to use. This whole thing are all pressed glitters. And if you don't like pressed glitters, this is definitely not going to be the one for you. And uh oh, there looks like there's something a little bit funky going on with the glitters. Do you see that little lump there growing? Is that growing in there? I, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to examine these a little bit further because I have like little bumps in them. And I'm not so sure about that. So, uh, but this is the color story. Very pretty. I'm getting so tired of the pops of blue in my personal opinion. I'm going to have to really examine those and uh, see if anybody else picked up this palette. Did you experience that? I'm very curious because, all right, let me show you this here. Doesn't it look like there's also some kind of something growing around this one? Hmm. And it's also bulged out the plastic. I'm going to get really close up with my editing if I can to show you that. I wish I had a microscope that I could look at these and see if that was actually mold or something. All right, stay tuned for an update on that one. That's a little disappointing considering this is not very old. Here's the Revolution Color Book that I picked up on a whim. I love the concept. I have not played with it very much. What I do love is the plastic divider that they have between so that the shadows don't get mixed. You have an entire matte side and then it's complementary shimmers on the, oh, it broke already, on the other side. Even lends into the purple tones too. So I gotta give this one some play time. This is also from Carity. I think this is the other one that I got free. Remember I told you it was the buy one, get one free. This is the Rosé All Day. As far as I remember, this is a fairly neutral everyday palette. Cardboard packaging again. You know, I have not even swatched this one. 
It's very pretty. It's just a neutral color scheme. I'm going to have to give it a go and see how I like it. This here is my Jeffree Star Blood Lust Palette. I kept the packaging because I thought it was so unique and the presentation. I happen to love this palette. A lot of people um, definitely had some complaints about it as far as the color story. I, I love this. I mean, I, I really do. The Velvet. People said it wasn't a purple palette. All the looks that I have gotten have been very much purple. I think they were looking for an all purple palette, but personally, I happen to like the varying degrees of colors. And this one, this color here is just amazingly stunning. Oh, I'm not personally buying from Jeffree Star anymore, but I'm certainly not going to get rid of the products that I love. This is the Morphe and Manny MUA Glam Palette that I got in BoxyCharm. It didn't impress me thoroughly. It has two really nice highlighters, which I'm enjoying. It's a color story that I have over and over and over again. I am going to keep it because it is fairly new, and I honestly haven't played with it that much. Estate Cosmetics uh, Venice Fling with, in collaboration with Bailey Sarian. It's pretty, but it doesn't call to me the way... I think I really want it to. I'm on the fence about getting rid of it. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a few more goes, and then if I'm not really happy with it, then I will just pass it along. Here's another palette from Carity. This is the Come As You Are palette. Really cute packaging. This has a bit of a grunge vibe to it. Reminds me a little bit of the, what's the freaking ABH palette? I, wow, my brain is fried after three hours. This is a crown palette that we received in our boxy charm. I liked it. I think it was really, really nice, but I am going to uh, pass it along. It's a great color story. I mean, the shadows performed fairly well, but I'm going to say goodbye to it. My amazing friends, I know that I said that I was going to do this in one video, but honestly, the length of this video is so absurd, I can't see anyone really sitting down and watching the whole thing. And also, I just don't think I can take sitting here anymore. It's probably been about four hours, and I... Mm. <laughs> What I will say is the next one that I do, the part two, that video is going to have all of my high-end palettes in it. My Pat McGrath, my Huda Beauty, a lot of my Natasha Denona. So I apologize if I have let some of you down. I really, really did try to keep my word and keep it as it is, but um, it was just impossible. I do want to show you what I am actually getting rid of. By getting rid of, I mean either giving away, selling on my Poshmark, or what have you. If Little Winter Cat will let me. Do, do you want to help me in some way there, little girl? <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's sitting on top of the box of stuff that I am uh, I'm getting rid of. Can, can you come over here? Come on. Come on, baby Winter Cat. <laughs> Of this box full of the palettes that I'm going to be purging and on top of that I also have these so I know that someone else is going to really enjoy these and I am happy to be passing them along and just you know letting go of some things in my life that I am not using and I do want to reward those of you who actually made it to the end of this particular video and I'm going to do a giveaway it's going to be a surprise giveaway I'm not going to let you know what's in it, but I guarantee you that it will have at least two palettes and a bunch of other stuff. It's going to be quite a large one, but I want to thank you, those of you who A, requested this, B, put up with the time it took for me to go through all of this, and just to say that I love you and how much I appreciate you. So all you have to do to enter is B18. I unfortunately have to make this one a U.S. only giveaway. It is so absurdly expensive to ship things overseas, but I will make another video. I mean, I will make another giveaway that I have coming up international as well. So that said, all you have to do to enter is please give this video a rating, thumbs up or thumbs down. Please mention in the comments, I made it with an exclamation point, and that is how I will know that you want to enter. Also, please leave me a way to get in touch with you. Twitter, Facebook, 
Instagram, email. There are so many ways for you to leave for me to get in touch with you if you win. I'm going to leave it open for one month. I don't know what day I'm going to put this up because this is going to take me an enormous amount of time to edit, but I will put in the description box the day that it will end. I just want to say in closing how grateful I am for all of you for giving me the privilege of doing this. It brings me so much joy and what brings me joy is the fact that all of you watch and I appreciate that more than you could ever know. I love you tremendously and of course my ending. Whatever part of the world you're in on around, I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week coming up. I love you. Good luck to all of you and I will see you in the next one, which will be the rest of my palettes. And believe me, there is still a lot more to go. Oh. Thanks, guys. Bye.